1,000 years ago, the Vikings worshipped many gods. But the mightiest of all our gods was Thor. And do you know why? Because he had a high-tech gadget. His hammer. And with his hammer, he could create thunder and lightning. And he used it to destroy and battle all the enemies that threatened his world. In his case, trolls and giants. Totally different enemies than threaten our world, like climate change, the energy crisis, and pollution. But wait, talking about Thor's hammer creating lightning, have you ever wondered what lightning actually is? Because I, I've always been told at school that all matter in the universe exists in one out of three states. So either it's a solid, you know, like an ice cube, and if you heat it up, it turns into a liquid. And if you heat it up even further, it melts and it becomes, oh, it's already melt. <laughs> it will become a gas. And the question is, what happens if you have a gas, the third state of matter, and you heat it up even further? What happens then? So it turns out that gas will turn into a different state of matter. It will become a plasma, the fourth state of matter. So what is a plasma? In your houses at home, electricity is flowing through copper wires. But as soon as a gas turns into a plasma, electricity can go straight to the air. So for example, like lightning, it's a nice example of a plasma. Another example you all know is the sun. It's a very hot plasma. And some of you probably already figured it out, but in your houses again, your plasma TVs, also plasma. <laughs> Actually, over 99% of the visible universe consists out of plasma. And it's not because all the aliens have plasma TVs, by the way. So, 99, over 99% of the visible universe consists out of something we, I haven't learned about at school. So I think it's really worth to learn something about that today. So why, why would you care about physics and states of matter and plasma? Well, I've worked like almost 10 years with plasma physics, doing research, doing development, and I have never ever ceased to be amazed by the many applications that, are, that exist using plasmas in all kinds of manners. Turns out that as soon as you create this special state, this plasma state, that you can do a lot of stuff. You can create and destroy easily all kinds of chemicals, destroy all kinds of stuff. So the question is, how can we use this? Similar like Thor used his hammer to battle the old-fashioned dangers. How can we use this modern-day technology, just like a modern-day hammer of Thor, to battle the, the dangers that threaten us? You know, what I mentioned before: climate change, pollution, energy problems. I will give you three examples how this plasma state and understanding it can help us to battle these enemies. First, the problem with energy. So imagine. The sun is really high in the sky. We take the sun, we copy it, and we build it here on Earth, like a small version, a small sun, somewhere in the room. So we can create clean energy. If we can do that, it would be a big ball of plasma, very hot, but if we can do that, we wouldn't need fossil fuels. We wouldn't need uranium. We wouldn't create greenhouse gases and we wouldn't create long-living radioactive waste. So that sounds like an ideal solution. It even sounds like science fiction. However, scientists are currently working to really build this kind of fusion plasma reactors, and they try to make fusion plasma energy with these reactors within 10 or 20 years. As a second example, pollution and waste. We all know the plastic soup in the ocean. 
Huge pots with plastic debris floating around the ocean. Companies are trying to develop huge plasma torches that they can use to destroy the plastic waste in the ocean. And as an example, closer to home, probably a lot of people here live on or close by pig farms. So if you do, you know that the smell can sometimes be a bit problematic. Plasma can be used also to destroy the molecules that create these smell problems. So I'm pretty sure that a lot of you now suddenly get interested in plasma physics. Um, I've told you about energy, I've told you about pollution, and as a third example, I would like to think about an even more ideal solution. Say we have waste. Can we use plasma to take waste and change it, not destroy it, but change it into something usable, a new resource, for example, energy? Actually, this can be done. We'll give an example. It's called solar fuels. If you catch the carbon dioxide that is coming out of your car or out of a plant, and that is responsible for creating climate change, but you catch it when it comes out of the car, you can use plasma and other processes to turn this dangerous gas back into a usable resource. Fuel, and you can use it again, so you close the cycle. It's an ideal solution. So now I've given you three different kinds of applications to use plasma for a better world. Um, of course, a lot of research and development is still needed to make this really applicable in our personal space. But I'm convinced that if we do that, we can create a, like a virtually modern-day hammer of Thor. And we can use that to battle previously mentioned uh, dangers. So if we, like modern-day Thors, can harness the power of plasma, we can battle the dangers that threaten our modern world. Thank you very much.